In the second part of uh, this lecture about inside culture, I want to focus on the case of the cultural transmission of sexual preferences in Drosophila melanogaster. And you remember that at the, at the end of the first part of this lecture, I proposed a mechanistic definition of animal culture, and I said that it was necessary now to apply it to a given animal model by testing the four plus one criteria in that specific system. And I want to now to do it with Drosophila melanogaster by going through the different criteria uh, one by one. So the first criterion is the essence of culture, is that it should be somehow transmitted, learned socially. You know a lot about this. I've been talking about this example in, of Drosophila melanogaster uh, in terms of social learning. Clearly, uh, with this device, we were able to show that uh, after seeing a demonstration of for one color, observer females showed a bias for the males of the color that was selected during the demonstration. And you can see here that on the left, on left part of the panel, the left bar, uh, they didn't learn because they were not informed. They, they, they didn't see the demonstration. While when they saw the demonstration, they showed a bias for the male of the color they showed, showed being preferred during the demonstration by another female. And this result has been replicated since then many times so that we, I can claim here that this criterion is fulfilled, yes. Uh, Drosophila melanogaster can learn socially their pref sexual preferences. The second criterion is about uh, the fact that to persist in time, uh, a preference should be transmitted from slightly older uh, to slightly younger, from old to young uh, individuals. Otherwise, it, it would be purely horizontal or it won't survive in time. And you, can, you have to think about this like a kind of transmission chain in which you've got a female of a given age she will copulate with a, a male, and in doing so, she will choose one of the males, potential males, and she will be witnessed by another uh, female, slightly younger or younger female, uh, that will in turn uh, make her own choice based on the, what she socially learned, and she will be witnessed by another female that is even younger, and so on across many st uh, transmission steps like this. One generation could be this, from parent to offspring, or fr from individuals from females from the parental generation to offspring, or it could be this, like it's likely to be the case uh, in Drosophila melanogaster, there are several transmission steps per generation. But we tested it in a situation that was intended to mimic the situation in which the demonstrator female would be of the age of the parents of these observer females. So there were two treatments in that experiment, one which I call horizontal, which is a replicate, a pure replicate of the experiment I showed you for criterion one, in which the demonstrator and the observer females were of the same age, three days, like in the previous experiments. And a second treatment, which was designed knowing that the level development at 25 degrees, which is the temperature we, that was used in, in the lab, uh, um, it, it, it lasts for 11 days. So a female that would be 14 days would be of the minimal age of the mother of these flies that were, uh, these observer flies when they are three days old. And the results were quite clear. Uh, um, uh, we, uh, the, the result we can see here that there the, the is, again, in the horizontal treatment when they are the same age, observer and, and demonstrator females are of the same age, uh, there is, uh, again, uh, bias for the, the color that was selected during the demonstration, and we found exactly the same result when the, the demonstrator female were, were of the age of the mothers of these flies, observer flies. So, and there was no significant difference between these two situations. So clearly we can conclude that the social transmission also works, also functions across age classes so that the information can persist if it is transmitted from old to young across time and hopefully generations. So criterion two is fulfilled as well. Criterion three is about memory, about the fact that when you learn something, you might, you might learn it for a few minutes or a few hours and then forget about it. 
but in this case, it would be counter. It, it would not be uh, in, interesting for cultural transmission because for cultural transmission to function, what you socially learn should be memorized for a certain amount of time, so that you will behave that way in front of younger individuals, so that they can copy you. And I don't detail the the, the, uh, the experiments that were performed to do this, but people were able to show that flies do build long-term memory that is that are tested at 24 hours that involve uh, some, some de novo protein synthesis. They use technical techniques to, to show this and um, that is memorized for a, a long time. Once it is this new structure built with these new proteins is uh, uh, built, then memory is there for quite a long time. And you have to remember that a drosophila uh, in, in a lifespan of an adult drosophila in, in the wild is something like a, a week on average. So few days means an extended period of time relative to their, their lifespan. So criterion three is fulfilled again. Criterion four is about the type of learning they have. They may learn to prefer male A over male B, which is interesting in itself, but which wouldn't be good for culture because male B and A will be dead soon. And, and they will be dead as the next generation, uh, very, high, uh, very likely. And so there is nothing to be transmitted because if you say, well, learn A, prefer B, A over B, well, uh, it can't be transmitted anymore. But if you learn to prefer males of the phenotype of A over males of the phenotype of B, green over pink in our case, uh, then this can be transmitted for a long time, a longer long tr transmission chain. And with a series of experiments, it was possible to demonstrate that Drosophila uh, females do not only learn to prefer a given male over another, but learn to prefer any male of a given color. They learn to prefer green males over pink males. So question four is fulfilled as well. So at that stage, we have the conclusion to conclude that Drosophila social learning meets the four criteria that had been claimed, claimed to be important for, uh, um, to, to, to lead to a cultural process. But the, see, if you think a little bit about it, the next question is whether this is enough to create and maintain cultural traditions, because this is the most obvious and most um, uh, um, visually evident um, marker of culture. But also because it's been used, this, uh, cultur this um, cultural traditions approach has been used uh, historically a lot to study animal culture. So this, this is a really important question. And to answer that question, it was necessary to build a, a model of a transmission chain in which the learners of one step become the, 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 the teachers of the next step. So the, the observer of one step become the demonstrators of the next step. And when performing such a model, here are, is an example of a simulation, it's a simulation model. The conclusion is that with this four criteria alone, traditions never em emerge. Whatever the parameters you play with of this parameter, of this model, uh, whatever the parameters, you don't see an emergence of, of a tradition. Let's see uh, the result here. On the x-axis is the transmission steps from, from uh, what happened, from zero to 100,000 uh, transmission steps, an extremely long uh, uh, transmission st uh, uh, chain. You've got 50%, which is random choice, and you can see that all along this very long transmission chain, uh, there is a lot of scatter, but it's always around 50%. It never goes in the, first, in the top panel or in the bottom panel. So there is no tradition emerging in the system. And there are many reasons for that, but one of the reasons is that social learning is not perfect in itself. In the best case, it is when we were studying uh, long-term memory, we obtained something like 80% of the females that behaved the way as showing that they had learned socially. As a university teacher, I would be delighted if 80% of you and all my students would have learned and memorized what I said in my lectures. But in, the, in this case, it is clear that these 20% flies that do not seem to be lear learning uh, 
would s strongly hamper the emergence of a collective preference that we call a tradition, because a tradition is a collective preference in this case. And there is another really important aspect that I didn't discuss yet, because in our experiment, in these experiments, as is the one I've been sh showing, uh, this, th we, th the observation was, th the idea was to show one female choosing between a green and a pink male. Interesting, but in nature, what a female would see is several females competing with different kinds of males. What would, would they learn in this, in this situation? For instance, in this case, would, would they learn to prefer green or pink or nothing? Well, there is a situation in which we can answer this question if we add an, an extra condition, an extra criterion, uh, a fifth criterion, which would be that the females learn in a conformist way. That is, they behave like the majority. In this case, more females are cooperating with green than with pink, so they would learn to prefer green. And, and when we input this kind of rule into a model of transmission chain, then immediately with the same parameters as the previous simulation I showed you, uh, you can see that the shape of the, 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 the simulation is completely different. We've got long periods in which the, the situation, the, the preference, collective preference remains within the top or the bottom panel, which I interpret as a, the pink at the top and green at the bottom is just an interpretation, of course. And the difference with the previous uh, uh, the simulation I showed you is just that we added conformity. All the parameters are the same elsewhere. So this raised the question, is it the case that Josephilla social learning is conformist? Is it possible that they, they learn in a conformist way? And this became a criterion five, as, as I said, um, um, which is females should learn in a conformist way. She should follow the majority. And for this, it was necessary to, to design a new, a new tool, which is called the hexagon, in which you've got a central compartment in which you can put uh, observer females, and in the periphery, you put demonstrator females. You can manipulate which color they will uh, 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 copulate with. Uh, and in this case, all females were shown to copulate with green. And the females here would see, well, everybody copulates with green. And we could play with the majority here. We had four situations in which there were more females cooperating with pink, four in which there were more females cooperating with green, and one control uh, experiment, yeah, which is here, in which there is exactly three with green, three with pink, 50-50. And if you think in terms of, ma of majority, you clearly have a range of majority that goes from 100% of the two extremes here down to 60% in the middle. So it's a fairly wide range of majorities that could be explored with this tool. And the results are there. You've got on the y-axis the proportion copulating with pink, for instance. And on the x-axis here, you have the, the, the different treatments. So the four uh, situations in which females copulated more with pink, the control 50-50, and four uh, situations in which they competed more with green. And the results were quite, the, some of the results were quite obvious. We, it was easy to, uh, to, to expect that in view of what you now know about social learning in, in this context, in Drosophila, you could expect that when you show them six pink, they would learn pink, and six green, they would learn uh, green. And in the in control situation here, 50-50, well, it was, it, it was also possible to predict that they would not learn anything because there is no information, there is no majority. Fine. Now, let's modify and diminish step by step this majority on the left side, on the pink side. So you can see that with 83%, it's still significant, it's still learning. Uh, 67, still learning. 60, still learning. And Interestingly, there is no significant difference between these two, these four bars. They, there is no significant difference. They learned equally well in the four situations, independently from the, the level of majority. And the same result was obtained on the, on, on the right side, that is on the green side. Uh, again, they learned equally well, independently from the level of majority. And there was no significant difference between them. So clearly, Females learn to prefer the most commonly chosen male phenotype equally well, independently from the level of majority. And the range, again, was from 100 to only 60%. So it's a step function. First step, a plateau, a second plateau. 
So this is criterion 5, and again, criterion 5 is, is fulfilled, and we've seen previously that when you input this into a model of a transmission chain, immediately you see the emergence of traditions. Talking about traditions, uh, it is also important to check that uh, this model, you know, a model is always a simplification, it's a crude thing, it's a crude simplification of reality. So it's, you can always criticize saying, well, maybe the model is not doing the right thing and not representing the, the reality enough. So it was interesting uh, to try to perform such a, a transmission chain to sh and then to compare this transmission chain to what the model would predict. And this was done by performing a transmission chain, like in the model, in which the learners of one step become the demonstrators of the next step. So the learners observe one step, the females around, and then they go to the, the next step, and they, they, they are transferred into the six chambers here with a set of six new observer flies and so on. And there, the important thing is that the teachers now, they, they choose freely. And uh, we start, the idea was to start with 100% uh, for one color and then free choice. And the transmission chain, a given transmission chain, would stop when it goes down to 50, okay, below 50, because at that moment there is no more information, the tradition has been lost. And they were able to perform th 36 such um, trials, which is an enormous uh, amount of, of, of experiment. Um, and then here are the results. You can see that on, in red here, what would the, be predicted under random choice, no social learning, so the red curve here, um, with 36 lines, uh, trials. Uh, in blue, what w was observed by the experimenters. So you can see that there is a lag in between and that this lag is significant, at least at the very beginning here. Uh, there is, uh, and in, in black here, are the, the predictions of the model. And you can see that they're very similar. They are overlapping uh, the observed d data, the actual data, quite well. I'll come back to this. But here there is an impression you might think, oh, but in the end, uh, the, the blue uh, line converges to the, the, the red line. This is a wrong impression. And a way to, to, to see that, how wrong it is, is to, to, to cal calculate the ratio of the observed, the blue, over the random red here. And this is the pink curve here, and we can see that across different steps, transition steps, accumulations, the, the difference accumulated to the point that in the end, at the eighth uh, uh, transition step, uh, the observed was 142 high, times higher than expected by chance alone. So clearly, uh, the transmission chains lasted much longer than expected by chance alone. And the second curve in green here is the same logic, but by calculating the ratio of the observed to the, the simulated one data. And you can see that the ra ratio is one all the time. It's really flat. There is no variation. It's one, 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 no accumulation, nothing. So clearly this shows that the model is valid, is able to represent the data, at least in the context with six flies uh, like this. And so now that we've validated, validated the model, we can use it to explore situations that would be impossible to practice, uh, to, to make an experiment with. For instance, in this simulation here, there were 100 flies, 100 observer females and 100 demonstrator females. It means 200, 100 males. It would be impossible to handle this in, in an experiment. But we can do using the model, as long as we, we trust the model enough, we can explore what it would give. And you can see that with this set of parameters, including conformity, of course, you can have very long periods of preferring, of a collective preference for a given male phenotype uh, and with switches and so on. And if you change, we play with the parameters and in particular with the number of flies in the system, now a simulation with 150 uh, uh, observer flies instead of, of, uh, of, um, of this, you can see that clearly uh, instead of 100 before, uh, this is the only thing that was, that was changed uh, relative to it before, you can see that the shape is quite different. You can see that here is the 50 random line. Okay, so right from the beginning, it went up to a, a situation in which for preference for, let's say, pink here, and uh, it stayed like this forever, collectively forever, during this 100,000 100, uh, transmission step long 
uh, transmission chain. It's a really impressive result. And if you think about this, if you say, well, one transmission step every day, 100,000 uh, days is, is more than 274 years, which means more than 9,000 generations, almost 10,000 generations, enormous period of time, really high, uh, stable. Well, under the conditions of the model, which is, again, a simplification of, the, of, the, of, of nature, of course. But the conclusion is that Drosophila melanogaster females have all the cognitive capacities to transfer their mating preferences culturally, potentially creating long-lasting local traditions of preferring a given male phenotype at the scale of the population, which would set the stage for speciation. Because if in one population they prefer, all the females prefer green, in another all female, females prefer pink for a long time like this, there might be a moment in which they will just ignore each other and there won't be any gene, tra gene transfer between these two populations and we will be on, on, on to a speciation process. And this considerably expands the, uh, would considerably ex expand the taxonomic range of cultural processes because we would now would need to in incorporate the, the invertebrates into the realm of uh, cultural processes, which to me sounds a bit shocking. So let's now discuss some general points. The first one is that we now have a new trackable definitions uh, of culture, definition of culture which is the part of phenotypic variation that is transmitted, inherited through social, a form of social learning that is, occurs across age classes from old to young, that is memorized for sufficient time to, uh, to offer the possibility to be copied by others, and that is trait rather than individual based as we've seen, and that incorporates a repair or reinforcement mechanism such as conformity uh, correcting for learning imperfections. And there is a sixth six point in this definition, which is that it is important to use all these parameters that have been measured with these five first criteria to uh, check that these five conditions collectively can lead to the emergence of long-lasting local traditions, the most striking marker of culture. And when you look at this uh, definition, which is a mechanistic definition, you can see it as an experimental toolbox uh, that can be transposed to m many or other organisms, uh, not all, because uh, uh, sometimes it's, some, mechan some species are quite difficult to handle. But uh, you can use this toolbox to explore the, the range of, of uh, animal culture, the taxonomic range of animal culture. And this uh, definition is also connected, although it's focusing on mechanis mechanisms, it's also connected to the pattern-oriented approaches, that is the tradition approach, uh, which is to document the existence of traditions, variation, lo persistent local uh, variation among populations. Another point I'd like to highlight here, which is crucial concerning insects, uh, the insect example, is that all these experiments, they show that insects can uh, transmit behavior culturally, but they don't show that they do actually do so in nature. And we are fully lacking evidence for this in nature. There is no a single paper documenting the fact that in this area, Dorsophila behave this way and in another they behave differently. While we have this kind of information, of course, as you've seen, in vertebrates, in vertebrates, we've got a lot of situations like this in which it's been shown that populations don't behave the same in different places. And this, we've seen in the first part of this lecture that this raised some questions about the mechanism behind, but still it is an important piece of information to study animal culture. So it's interesting because it is exactly the opposite situation in insects for the moment, in which we have a better knowledge of mechanisms, but no real evidence for traditions. Probably because we never looked for, for them, because it's quite hard to do. Um, and so my, my goal here is to show that these texts are, are quite complementary. They, we need both. They, each of them bring a different kind of information into the, the debate about animal culture. So now just a consideration about the challenges for the future of animal culture. It's really important, I think uh, all of, of us have insisted on this, to uh, perform experiment on animal culture. Uh, and we, show so, uh, we saw some, ex you saw a lot of, of examples before, uh, several examples. Um, because this is the only way to study mechanisms and to study causality, what d does um, produce these uh, traditions. 
and it should be applied to many, as many species as possible to study the range, uh, taxonomic range of animal culture. In the case of insects, it's, imp it's really important now to study the existence. Is it possible to, uh, to see the emergence of uh, cultural traditions, differences among populations like this? And uh, the goal, with the goal of integrating culture into biology in general. And here are a series of uh, all the, the, the references I cited during this lecture eight about insect culture. Thank you for your attention.